Words. They may seem small or insignificant, but are they really? What if your words are not as insignificant as you think? What if your words can hurt? What if they can cut deep? Some teachers here on the Santa Teresa campus. Some teachers on teachers here at the Santa Teresa campus have a few things to say about harmful words. Words affect everybody, including adults. We might not think this in the moment. We might not think what we say before we say it. But words can mean, can sometimes, words can sometimes mean the difference between life and death. We might not take it seriously in the moment, but no. Do I need to introduce myself or anything? Or? Um, no, you can if you want to. Okay. Well, uh, is it recording? Yes. <laughs> uh, I'm Mr. Wynn. Um, my bullying story is in the fourth or fifth grade. Um, I used to take the bus home, and I was riding on the bus. And I was a very uh, quiet kid. Um, and as I was leaving and getting off the bus, um, this other girl approached me and she started getting up in my face um, actually when I got off the bus and she started um, telling me, you know, why are you talking shit about me um, and, and just instigating and, um, and, and apparently it was another girl who was walking with her who had started spreading that rumor and I of course, you know, I didn't even know who the two girls were so I kept on telling that girl who was in my face, you know, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't even know you. Why would I say anything about you? And, and it occurred and it dawned on me, you know, even, even though I was pretty young, that the other girl was the main problem because she was trying to start, you know, start a fight. And um, fortunately, I was taught at a, at a, even at a young early age that my parents never ever wanted me to fight, you know, unless I was, you know, fighting t to survive because I was in a dangerous situation and I had enough wherewithal that at that age that I realized I would be in bigger trouble with my parents if I had then gotten in a fight, you know, regardless of, you know, uh, whose fault it was because then you get sucked into that. And um, eventually, you know, so, you know, both girls were in my face, like literally inches from my face and wanting to basically me basically fight with me and I thought it was really silly because, you know, I don't even know, I didn't know who they were um, and plus I wouldn't want to be fighting with some girls, you know, although they were, uh, uh, you know, older than me, like probably one grade level or so. But I eventually they just gave up because I just would not, I refused to fight them and I just kept on walking and I walked away from the situation. Um, and looking back on it now, I think that I'm, that taught me ways to basically how to walk away from a fight and walk away from a situation like that where it could have gotten really bad. Um, and yeah, and so I'm just, you know, that's why it was kind of my bullying story. And looking back on it now, that girl who wanted to fight me was a problem, but the girl who instigated was the bigger problem because she clearly was trying to start, you know, really stupid business. And there's gonna be plenty of people like that in the world and, um, it just reminds me there's different kinds of bullies, you know, and that one girl who went to fight probably had nothing going on in her life where she felt like, you know, she was trying to seek attention in the wrong way by fighting, starting fights with people. And that other girl who was trying to instigate, you know, again, you know, with the people like that, you know, there's something other going on in their life where they don't feel like, you know, they, um, maybe they don't feel secure about themselves, so they want to start other business and to feel secure about themselves, I guess. So that was my bullying story. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do you have, uh, as a teacher, have you ever, or witnessed situations where certain words or certain comments, um, mm -hmm. not yeah, not only in the classroom, not only instigate a fight, but like um, sometimes uh, instances where it doesn't necessarily lead to a fight, but you can see that a student has been bothered by that comment or. Or a situation where you have been bothered by a comment that a student has made? Yeah, I think um, in this day and age, um, 
I think Af in this day and age, I think it's more taboo to make comments about race. Um, I think it's more easy for people to make comments about sexuality. Um, and so I think the most common one, at least in my experience, is hearing students talk about, you know, some calling somebody gay or, um, uh, although periodically once in a while I'll hear comments about race where a student from making a comment, although they might not have intended it to be in, like, in, in, uh, in an aggressive way or to attack somebody, but they don't realize that what they're saying could be really offensive to somebody. Um, like for example, sometimes students will use the word cracker, right, and in my classroom, and I would tell them, you, know, you can't use that word in my classroom because regardless of whether or not it's your, you're using it in a joking way with your friends, and oftentimes it's actually white students who use that word. And, but it's really offensive, you know, because you're, it's used in, historically it's used in a demeaning way. Um, so I don't allow that in my classroom, and, um, or it's just, you know, students who use the, the N-word, you know, use the word nigger, um, which, you know, I don't care whether or not it's used in music and media, whether or not it's socially you know, accepted by the mainstream, but in a classroom setting, it's different than the general public setting where you were when you're in a private setting with your friends. Um, you know, somebody in the room could be feel really, uh, um, feel really uncomfortable, and we, I don't want everyone to be in a situation where they feel like they're unsafe. And um, from my experience is that um, when you set the tone for all your students that there is absolutely no tolerance for any sort of um, really harmful words, whether that is is based on somebody's religion or their ethnicity and their background or their sexual orientation, it makes uh, my experience is the classes are always much more fun and wonderful when the students don't ever have to worry about that kind of stuff. Yeah, um, I've actually had a really interesting incident when I was in high school. Actually, um, I had asked for a letter of recommendation from a teacher of mine. An art teacher. And I didn't know him too well, but I needed it uh, from art teacher because I was applying f uh, to study art at the college level. And that teacher made a really racist comment. It was really over, and I was just shocked. And um, and he, although he was saying it in a really soft, because we were having a private conversation, but it was in his classroom. And um, and I was asking for a letter of rec, and I guess and, um, I was one of the very few students that ever has ever asked him for a letter of rec. And, um, and he, as he was making his comment, he he made the comment, you know, you're not, oh you're not like the, all the other Mexican kids, um, and you know they don't ever you know they would never be asking me for a letter of rec, um, and then I, I, he also said something to the effect of um, Mexican students eating beans and burrito, and I was just so shocked because I just couldn't imagine a teacher saying that because you would um, you think of teachers you know being a role model. And that was really shocking to me. Um, and so it made me think, you know, how many years had he been saying that? And what uh, kind of message he's sending to Mexican kids, Mexican students? And, um, and what kind of damage he's doing to their self-esteem and not giving, having them ever be able to see beyond, you know, what other people's perception of them are. Okay, so that was really shocking to me. Um, what else, any other stories? Um, I don't like it when students use the word retard in my class because um, I have a lot of students who have special needs um, and plus most people, most students in general don't have a really good knowledge of different types of disabilities and so when we're talking about mental retardation or a physical handicap, you know, I have a lot of students who have a physical handicap. I have students who are in a wheelchair bound or um, I have students who um, have a speech impediment or they have a, um, uh, a um, manual dexterity problem. But that doesn't mean that they're dumb. They're like super sharp and smart. But because of the physical attributes, people think that they're, you know, that they have um, uh, mental um, retardation. And so they think, so they treat them in a certain way. And I think those students are very self-conscious. And so I don't allow that as well, to use the word retard in my class. So yeah. what advice or what would you say to students who because I believe this obviously kind of is a culture thing, you know, if uh, your friend says it, you tend to say it because you think it's funny or, or you might say it not intentionally or maybe sometimes you do say it not intentionally, but what would you say to students who are kind of stuck in that position where they don't know if they should say it to be cool with their friends or like when they're stuck in that position where they don't know what to do or to stop, yeah. to realize what they're doing and to try and stop it? 
Uh, yeah, I think at that the, at this this age, at the high school age level, I think one of the hardest thing is um, that peer pressure, and also in general, it's difficult to challenge somebody that is our friend or a loved one or family member. Um, and what I say to that is, um, you'd always be surprised at how you can change somebody else through your own example. Um, like, for example, even within my family, my parents, you know, um, often had a very racist attitude about certain groups of people. And it took, you know, years and years and years and a lifetime of me constantly um, calling out my parents on certain thing, comments that they made about black people or Mexican people. And it made them think, realize, oh, you know, oh, you know, the same comments I'm making about, uh, you know, Mexican people can be the same comment that somebody else can be making about me because I'm Asian. And that is unfair. Uh, and, and again, I think it's part of it is establishing a trust with your friend. And if they're really your friend, they will not be offended by you calling them out on that. And if they are offended and then they then um, diss you because you call them out on it, then they're, they, end up, they were never your real friend to begin with. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Uh -huh, you're welcome.